So hi everyone and welcome to this video on block pricing or quantity discrimination, which is uh, the second part of our uh, lectures on second degree price discrimination. So the first part revolved around two part tariffs under both an identical and a non-identical consumer case. Now we're gonna uh, go to quantity discrimination or more commonly known in economics as block pricing. And essentially, it's about charging different prices for different quantities of a product. Uh, but in this case, all, scenario, all consumers will pay the same price for a certain set of quantities. So you aren't uh, uh, specifically uh, giving or imposing a specific price on individual consumers. Rather, you are imposing a pricing scheme based on the quantity that they, ch uh, they choose to purchase, right? Now, usually, as we said in our discussions on two-part tariffs, uh, most firms rarely or perfectly know what uh, the consumer's highest reservation price would be, which is why we said that perfect price discrimination, it's probably not too feasible for most monopolists or most firms. However, uh, it's reasonable to believe that a firm may know that most consumers are willing to pay more for the first unit than successive units of uh, quantity. So what does that mean? If you think of the demand curve of a particular consumer, so that's P and then Q, okay? So say this is a consumer's demand curve. The consumer has a relatively high asking price, so it's willing to pay for this much, say P1, to receive Q1. But to get Q2, okay, to get Q2 number of units, it will only do that if the price is lower. But if, if they just demand one unit, then they can opt to shell out a high amount for that just one unit. But then as they increase their consumption, they're willing to pay less and less for an additional unit of a good, right? And th that stems again from our law of demand. Now, uh, in this case, what happens is that each firm can price discriminate, so they can price discriminate by letting the price each customer pays vary with the number of units that the customer buys. But essentially, all customers pay for the same price for any given quantity. And that given quantity is segmented into what we call blocks, right? So the monopolist attempts to maximize profit by selling its product to an individual consumer in blocks or in chunks or in certain groupings of quantities rather than pricing at one unit at a time. So for example, the consumer wants to buy nine units uh, and uh, nine units is exactly how much one block contains, then it pays uh, a price for that block of a standard unit price of that block. But should it choose to uh, purchase, say, 18 units, the sec uh, there would be two blocks in that case, assuming we have a standard nine-unit segmentation, and it uh, opts to pay a different price for the second block, largely probably a lower price for that second block. Now, um, what uh, as I said, the monopolist will attempt to maximize its profit by selling its product to individual consumers in blocks. Now, there are generally two types of that. One where is, uh, we have a declining block pricing and it's essentially charging consumers who make large purchases less per unit than those who make small purchases so this is more common in well a lot of merchandising or retail wherein if customers buy typically in bulk uh, so the bulk discounts are typically grouped in quantities uh, and it's a very direct application of quantity discrimination and when the consumer buys more Okay, uh, the per unit price will eventually fall and the per unit price is less than people who just buy a small amount or in low quantities. Now, there's also a case, however, of increasing block pricing, which is that uh, for uh, consumers who make large purchases, essentially they pay more per unit than those who make small purchases. And it's typically... Uh, uh, something to do uh, like a typical pricing scheme when the industry that it's in or when you're buying a product that requires some form of extraction or some form of environmental consequence like that. So typically there would be social costs associated with those. So the more common one in at least the context of 
economics is uh, essentially the first one, which is a decreasing block pricing case. So let's try to get this concept a bit better. Okay, so we'll use a graph and then we'll use an example. So consider this case. Suppose the monopolist faces a demand curve equal to P is equal to 20 minus Q and the marginal cost is constant at 2. Okay, so uh, the with uniform pricing, okay, with uniform pricing, that's uh, the monopolist would only charge one price, okay? Uh, the, again, and as we said in our previous lectures, the condition that will uh, happen is the monopolist will price based on MR is equal to MC, right? So we have an MR curve and an MC curve here. So the monopolist based on this curve, assuming that D represents this demand, okay, it will choose to charge a price of, um, of $11, okay, so that's $11, and at this price, okay, the quantity that will be sold are just 9 units, okay, so that's the quantity that will be sold, okay, because in this condition, we just, um, we just uh, say here, because it intersects here, the quantity that will be sold is 9. Then the producer surplus is essentially, uh, that's going to be 11 times 9, okay, minus 11, uh, 9, sorry, 9, times the, the marginal cost per unit, which is constant, so that's 2. So this is going to be equal to 99 minus 18, uh, and you get that equal to 81. So... Under a uniform pricing scheme, okay, under this uniform pricing scheme, the monopolist will earn a profit or captures a profit equal to 81. And part of which, again, goes to the total firm's uh, fixed cost and part of that goes to profit, right? Because there's still something there. Okay, now suppose, okay, instead of a uniform pricing scheme, the firm uses a declining two block pricing scheme. So what happens is, uh, under this scenario, uh, the consumer will buy 9 units at the price of $11. So that's that initial case. But there are consumers who want to buy more. And they can do that so they can purchase an additional 3 units, say, at a price of just $8 a unit. So say uh, we charge $11 per unit in the first block. Uh, for the first nine units and eight dollars for every other succeeding uh, purchase of each additional unit of a good case okay, so, and be, uh, due to that pricing scheme say the consumer opts to buy an additional three because it was uh, instead of charging that one price for nine units for every unit uh, they have a sort of a discount and they can just purchase it at eight dollars for the additional unit so we have um, something here so uh, there will be an area here, okay, so uh, the two-part system, so they pay 8, okay, and in this 8, there will be an additional demand, so it will intersect there, and this one will be equal to 12 units, so let's just write letters, um, let this one be, uh, let this one be K, let this one be F, and let this one be uh, L, okay, so we have that area there. So in this case, the consumer will buy nine units at a price of $11, and it will buy um, the additional three units, so 12 minus nine, that's three, okay, at just $8 for a total of 12 units. So the consumer will buy 12 units, but it will pay $11 for the first nine units and $3 for the remaining, uh, I'm sorry, $8 for the remaining three units. Hence, the monopolist captures an area, okay, an area, um, an additional area of producer surplus, which is equal to this area, right? It would have otherwise lost this area, okay, if it had just stuck to uniform pricing. And uh, that area there, it's equivalent to $14, okay? Uh, why is that? Because under a two-block uh, pricing scheme, so the producer surplus will be... Uh, that's going to be uh, 11, okay? Uh, that's 11 is the price for the first nine units plus uh, the price for the second, um, the second block is eight, okay? And since the price decreased, it will choose to buy three additional units, okay? Instead of just buying the nine units, uh, less uh, the number of units uh, sold, so that's uh, 12, 
Okay, so that's 12 times the marginal cost of 2. And you'll find that the producer surplus in this case will be equal to $99, right? So it's going to be much higher than the producer surplus under uniform pricing. So that's the advantage of the two uh, block pricing scheme. Now, the question for the monopolist is this. What is the optimal block tariff that can maximize producer surplus and therefore profit for each uh, profit profit gain from each consumer? So what we do is, for simplicity, we assume that so we let uh, we assume that the firm's tariff okay, consists of only two blocks, right? So for simplicity, in most of our examples, we'll just say it's a two-block pricing scheme, and the individual's demand curve okay, uh, is represented as P is equal to A minus B, Q, okay? Under the first block, so the first block, it's gonna be, you're gonna charge, the firm will charge a price of P1, and this will be A minus B, Q1, right? And so they will purchase Q1 amount of um, uh, of the good. So in, the, in our case, P was equal to 11, and then Q1 was equal to nine in that case, right? Now, for the second block, the second block, uh, second block, the second block involves a uh, pricing at P2. So in our case, the P2 is equal to 8, which is lower than the first block. And it will uh, essentially charge, uh, uh, charge this price for the quantity Q2 minus Q1. So it's a difference between Q2 minus Q1. So it's just going to be 3 units, right? So it's going to be that. And it looks the, the relevant demand curve for the second block is just A minus B Q2. So the optimal block tariff that is uh, used, which maximizes the monopolist profit or producer surplus from selling to each consumer, is essentially okay, producer surplus, which is revenue from total output. So that's the output produced for both. Uh, block 1 and block 2, output sold, uh, less the variable cost uh, for the total units sold. So this is going to be equal to revenue 1 plus revenue 2, less the variable cost of Q2. Note that Q2 is equal to, um, is equal to uh, the total quantity that will be sold. Okay, so... This one will be equal to, uh, if we simplify this one, that's P1 times Q1, okay, right, uh, plus P2, then the, uh, the, the quantity that will use the P2, which is in this case is 8, will be Q2 minus Q1. So it won't charge 8 for all the, 11, for all the 12 uh, units of production, it will just charge it for the 3 additional units, right? Uh, less the variable cost, right? So less the variable cost. And if you uh, simplify this in terms of uh, mathematical terms, okay, we can derive the formula PS, which is equal to A minus BQ1 times Q1 plus A minus BQ2 times Q2 minus Q1, less the variable cost of Q2. So, uh... What we're gonna find is that if we use, uh, sorry, if we use this uh, equation here, if we use this equation, we can derive the first order conditions, okay, the first order conditions for a maximum producer surplus, which is just that you want to derive the producer surplus equation, this equation with respect to Q1 and equal it to zero, and derive it with respect to Q2 and equal it to zero. And we can solve for these two FOCs in the two unknowns, Q1 and Q2, to find the optimal quantity blocks. That is Q1 and Q2 minus Q1, which is the difference between the total and how much the consumer purchased from the initial block. So to determine the optimal block prices, we substitute these uh, uh, values for Q2 minus Q1 from the FOC in the equations for the relevant demand curve for each block. So... In the next video, we're going to deal with an actual calculus example of this so that I think you can get that better once that, um, once that is shown. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.